Hello again. This is just a quick video on how to go about sharpening Prismacolor colored pencils without breaking them. I started using Prismacolor Scholar student grade pencils about two years ago. I really didn't know much about art or colored pencils and I chose these because one, they were reasonably inexpensive and two, they had good reviews. I also purchased a Prismacolor Scholar sharpener with the sets as well as some colorless blenders. The colorless blenders are great, but I wouldn't waste your money on the Scholar Sharpener, and I'll explain why later. I use the Scholar pencils for several drawings and had to deal with many broken leads until I figured out how to sharpen them so they were less likely to break. I also moved on to other sets of pencils, Faber-Castell Classic, Polychromos, Lyra Rembrandt, Prang, Crayola, Steidler, and Prismacolor Premieres. Now feel free to watch any of my reviews to see my thoughts on each of these sets. What I did notice is many of the other pencils didn't have the breaking lead issues that the scholars had. Many people have issues with Prismacolor and breaking leads. A few reasons why? The leads are soft, and this is what makes them great to work with. They blend better than any pencil I have used. Almost too good in some cases. They use poor quality wood. I notice that there can be soft sections, there can be hard sections and brittle sections. Often the wood flakes away from the lead. And the last reason is sometimes the leads themselves aren't centered very well. I believe it is a combination of these three things that result in leads breaking. So you need to address each of them in order to be successful. The first thing I've done to prevent breakage is to use a Faber-Castell trio sharpener like the one shown here. It has three places to sharpen pencils, one for thicker pencils and two for standard size. One of the standard size sharpeners is labeled universal, and I use this for pencils that don't typically break. The other side has a sharpener labeled color grip. The color grip side is a lower angle sharpener, meaning after you sharpen with it, you don't end up with a long extended lead. When the scholars and premieres come from the factory, they'll arrive with a very low angle point, so a very short extended lead, which generally isn't very useful. When you sharpen them, you want a sharpener that's going to give you enough of a point to allow for detail, but not too far, otherwise the lead will just break. The universal sharpener, also the Prismacolor Scholar sharpener, Will, will result in a high angle lead that is just going to break. Here I have used a Mitsubishi sharpener with an extreme high angle lead just to emphasize what I mean. If we look at the four results, the mauve pencil is the factory one. The red is done with the color grip. The yellow, or sorry, the gold yellow is done using the universal sharpener and the blue one using the Mitsubishi sharpener. The red one is what we want to go for. The color grip section of the Faber-Castell Trio Sharpener works great. If you know of any other low angle sharpeners, please let me know. One thing I will point out is that you need to replace your sharpener quite regularly. I've had this one for almost two years and I'm starting to notice it's struggling with the wood. Once the sharpener feels dull, get a new one. Replace the blade or sharpen the blade if you can. Another option for sharpening your pencils is to actually use a blade itself. I don't recommend using a utility knife. You can do it. I'm not sure how much pencil you actually save in the long run. I'm sure you can become good at using a utility knife. But for me, going with the sharpener is the easier option. That covers how I sharpen Prismacolor pencils. However, there are other factors that affect pencil breakage. I already mentioned keeping your pencil sharpener sharp, replacing it if necessary. I also wanted to mention not to use them in the cold. These are wax pencils and one way of repairing them is to heat them up in the oven or the microwave. Again, I don't recommend doing this. But it only makes sense 
that they could become brittle if you use them in cold conditions. When you're working with them, try to work with them in a warm room. When you're sharpening them, sharpen them gently. Take your time, especially when you're just about to sharp, start sharpening the pencil. Also be careful when you're removing the pencil from the sharpener, because this is a time where you can accidentally break the tip off. Don't drop Prismacolors. This rule I break all the time. Even doing this video, I drop several of the Scholar pencils. If you drop them, you might end up shattering the lead inside and every time you sharpen it, the lead will break. So do not drop them. And maybe even flag anyone that you do drop, just so you know why it's breaking. Lastly, don't abuse the pencils. I have two sets of Prismacolor Premiers that I keep in their metal tin. I don't take them anywhere, and I always keep them lying flat. I try not to drop them, and I'm careful sharpening them with the color grip section of my trio sharpener and I have yet to break a single lead. I have two sets of scholar pencils, one set my kids play with. I believe I've dropped both sets. I hate the case they come in since you can't see the pencils in the back row so you need to pour, pull more pencils out than you really want and getting the pencils back in their case can be quite difficult. Because I break the scholar leads constantly, I would recommend getting a proper case for them. Alternatively, because the scholars are nearly the same price as the premiers, I'd avoid the scholars completely and just get the premiers that come in a good case. Recently, I've been picking up sets of Prismacolor premiers for about 50 cents a pencil Canadian. That's a steal for artist grade pencils. I realize that they do often get bad reviews because of the breaking leads but there are some simple steps you can take to avoid breaking them. I think if you follow my tips, you shouldn't have any problems. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to try and put up at least one video a month. I've got a backlog of drawings I want to do, so hopefully I'll get something posted before Christmas. Thank you for watching.